What is up, everybody? Welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. It's Friday afternoon. You know what that means. It's time for the Amy, Rex, and Robbie show. And I am Robbie, and we cannot have the Rex and the Amy and the Robbie show without Robbie, without Amy, without Rex, and maybe even without Alex. So let's go ahead and bring him in. What is up, everybody? Station. Station. Hello, station, station. Hello, hello. What's going on? Gotta get my glasses on so I can read the comments. Anissa, hello. Nice. Pedro, hello. Hello, collecting. Hello. Hello, hello. GT Key, chill out, man. See a dream. What's going on? All right. Um, we got a super fun show today because this week we have had trailer overload. So we're going to be talking about all these trailers that have been dropping this week, including. Beetlejuice, Star Wars, The Fall Guy, Mad Max, maybe even a little House of the Dragon. One day, one day, you give an inch and they take a mile, right? So he thinks he's sitting on my seat because I'm a little late. Get out of my seat. Get up. Okay. I'll let you stay right. for a little bit, maybe, if you're good. Because I know <laughs> you're excited about Star Wars Acolyte. Get so it, I may it. or may not so people can see you. Nobody wants to see him. Are you kidding me? Look, the viewership starting to drop. What's up, What's guys? What's up, Rex? How you doing, buddy? There's three uh, of us doing, now. Look at that. I'm doing, buddy. How are you? Oh, I'm doing good, man. Excited to have a chat about these shows. Now, right before we went on. Oh, wait. We can do Roadhouse next Friday, right? Yes. I, did, I asked next him right before the show started. I'm like, our, our right. Roadhouse review is next week. Yeah, cool. Roadhouse will be next week. But this week, we're going to be talking about all these trailers. And right before we started... I was like, has anybody seen the House of the Dragon trailers? Because they released two of them, a green trailer and a black trailer, and Alex just watched them. I'll tell you this. I love House of the Dragon. I was like into Game of Thrones for a moment, but then I kind of fell out of it. But House of the Dragon season one blew me away. I absolutely loved that show. I've been eagerly anticipating its uh, its return. It returns this June. They dropped two trailers, one from the perspective of the High Towers, one from uh, the Targaryens. Holy cow, dude. The trailers, they 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 wooed me again. Like I'm so pumped for this. Alex, I saw your reaction. It seemed like you liked it. What's very exciting is that season one is actually kind of a prequel season to its own show. Season one is actually kind of episode or season zero because season one really built up the, the, the characters and the relationships to get you ready. But there was only basically three locations: King's Landing, Dragonstone, and Driftwood. Oh, only three places. This season two is going to expand actually into Westeros and show other things that are going on, and show the, the mainland, and it'll basically give us a more, not a fine-tuned story, but a big encompassing story. Just like season one of Game of Thrones, where they introduced so many things and showed so many locations. We're going to get a lot more cool locations here, a lot more, now that they introduce the characters, we can build on those relationships, get bigger story, bigger pictures, because now we don't have to focus on learning out who these characters are. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm beyond excited. I, I, I thought that that was one of the best written shows I had seen in a very long time. The performances were amazing, so I'm pumped. Now, Amy, you're not really a Game of Thrones House of the Dragon person, right? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I'm not, but I'm happy for everyone who's excited. I'm happy for everyone who's excited. You don't have to apologize for that. You don't have to apologize. Rex, you got any thoughts on the upcoming uh, House of the Dragon you know season two? House of the Dragon, I, I watched first season. I didn't get into it the same way I, I got uh, into Game of Thrones. I don't know why. It just, I you know, it, it, Game of Thrones was something completely new when it came out. So I guess, I, yeah, I couldn't get into the characters. I don't know why. So, so not really, to be honest. All right. Well, me and Alex are alone on that one, but it's okay, Alex. You know, we can we can have watch parties and stuff if you want. So, <laughs> oh, I actually I host a, every single Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon episode. I have hosted a watch party for my friends in my house when uh, Spirit Hollow in 2019. Spirit with the Spirit Halloween near me when, when, when uh, on November 1st I went to get all the displays and they had this Game of Thrones sign. It's basically the size of like, the opening logo. Literally, I'm not kidding. Literally, from me to Rex, it's like six feet tall. Say, six feet wide. So I put it outside on my house every Sunday for Game of Thrones, and just be that annoying guy that says, "Hey, there's Game of Thrones things happening here." What a nerd! I love it. <laughs> I think that's awesome, man. All right, so I don't want to like. Let's go ahead and just dive into the Star Wars stuff because I I don't want to like have the whole show being like uh, dominated 
by Star Wars talk, whether it's positive or negative. So let's talk about the trailer for the latest show from Disney Plus, Star Wars, The Acolyte. Um, I'm, I'm assuming this is set during the, I guess they call it the High Republic era now. Um, you, we used to call it the Old Republic or whatnot. Um, I watched the trailer. I mean, it's, it's all right. Well, if, you're, if you're living in it, how can you call it the Old Republic, right? So uh, the Old Republic is actually more categorized as about a thousand years before or so before episode uh, four or one. So High what's Republic the High Republic? Is, because I, I I tried reading that High Republic it, comic don't do and it. I got, don't do I got, it, I got Robbie, yes. Robbie, don't yes. do it. Don't open the can of worms. Don't, so, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. See. Seriously. And this don't is exciting. So High Republic is the time period, for the, the ending of that, basically when the Jedi were at their heyday, about 400 to 100 years before episode one. This this, epi- this is about 90 years before episode one. And it's basically okay. showing the Jedi that goes from their heyday <coughs> to where they could be in a place where they could You see what you did, Rob. You see what you did. Okay. Well, I, mean, I, I need to context though, because I have no idea when this show is taking place. All right. Like, so uh, the point of Jedi. Point, okay. So the point of it, is to talk about what we thought of the trailer, right? So I'm going to call it out. It's no surprise to anyone. Billy Power Max did not like it. Okay. <laughs> so shocker there. Really? I had to be honest. I liked it. I watched the trailer. I liked it. I think they're finally delving into something that we all want, right? So, you know, we want to see in all the movies, the Jedi have always been almost gone, you know, almost eliminated. You know, even even in the middle trilogy, they were always under attack, right? So this is kind of seeing them at their height, right? When things were going very, very well for them. And we've never seen that. It's got lightsabers, lightsabers are cool. We all know that. So I'm excited. I think the, I think this 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 might this might take uh certainly better than uh Boba Fett. I mean, come on, let's call it what it is. All right, so I think this one this one could could may have some legs. So I, I I'm excited about this one, actually, <laughs> quite honestly. And we're at a time yeah. period where we don't have to focus on Skywalkers, so we can. Yeah, can do I agree with they that. Want. I agree with that. I, 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 you know, again, getting a little tired of, you know, it always surrounding the Skywalker and that, in that whole, that whole thing. We need to get away from it, and I think that, that this is, uh, this is good. Really quick, did you guys see that they're they're doing all the Skywalker movies for May the Fourth? I don't know how that marathon's gonna go. So it's, everyone's been to one of those. Let me know. I just like say the theater. Yeah. Oh man, who's I got time it. to watch nine Star Wars movies in a theater? Yeah, I, I hate to say it. March, uh, May the Fourth has become kind of like Arbor Day. It just, it you just know, hey, serious. Happy May the Fourth. Uh, okay, I mean, you know, it just kind of lost its its umph, if you will, right? Um. Yeah. So, so Rex so, liked the trailer. I, I, I thought I the trailer it. was okay. It didn't necessarily do anything to like sell me on it. I mean, I'll check it out when it comes out. I do love Carrie Ann Moss, so it's cool to see her. Yes, that was there. the other thing. I didn't yeah. realize that. Yeah, I didn't realize she was in it until I watched the trailer. I'm like, hey, it's Trinity. How cool. So, so, got so keep in mind, the Mandalorian trailer came out, and it was all about the Mandalorian. <coughs> it was great, a lot of fun, really a lot of hype for the Mandalorian a show called The Mandalorian. Then episode one comes out, and then the episode and so, spoiler, it's been it's been over four years. We see Baby Yoda Grogu at the end, and we learn that this isn't about Mandalorian himself. This is more about you know other characters that that, that focus that shape his journey. So the acolyte, I don't think we've seen the acolyte in the trailer at all. In my personal opinion, I think we're going to see, and this is me thinking, we're going to see Darth Plagueis. And if we don't see Darth Plagueis, I think we're going to riot because he was around this time with his master, Darth Tenebris. Darth Plagueis was Palpatine's master. So what better way to show the rise of the Acolyte than show basically the rise of Darth Plagueis into his true power. Dude, form. what'd you think of the the the, 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 the trailer? So the scene... P- Professor Star Wars. Seeing the physical action scenes more than the lightsaber battles and seeing almost um, martial arts and force stoppage it's going to be a lot of old school new force powers that we not not new per se but things that we never thought about so watching carry on carry on moss almost do her best trinity and just keep doing martial arts to stop the the villain is just going to be so much fun there's going to be a lot of practical effects and a lot of you know old school new things is it me has he not answered the question yet what what did you think of the trailer it, it was a good teaser that didn't give Jeez. anything away. 
Okay. Did you like it? Did you not like it? I mean, it's yes, I liked it. Okay. <laughs> Here we there go. Yay! Alex finally answered the question. Goodness, Rex, you're <laughs> like on one. one is, is Rex Wars. is on one today, everybody. Watch out. Dude. Jesus. <laughs> That's right, man. I got a hell of a week, dude. All right. I don't care if you're an 80 year old lady in the car. You better move it out the left lane. Or I'm gonna run you over. Um, <laughs> that's kind of that's the kind of Friday I'm having, people. But anyway, so you, so, you're, so no, Alex, I, you're I saying like that you're 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 pumped for the show in general just because you're excited to see this kind of era being played out. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. I, mean, I've been I reading, am too. Yeah. I've been reading the comics since they came out with the High Republic. I haven't read the novels per se. I read the first one. Thank you, Jay. Um, get to the but. <laughs> But so my new model for you. But people have to remember, though, this is not the first TV show set in the High Republic era. We've already have High Republic era TV content with the Star Wars Adventures, the show on uh, the show on Disney Plus. Is that it's the animated the show Republic. or something? Yeah, it's animated show. Okay. Um, Yoda. I mean, it's a, it is a kids show, but Yoda's in it, and it just gives a. I mean, it's definitely a kids show, absolutely more so than Clone Wars. But it is set in the higher public, so you you just have to see that time period. But it's just yeah, but you gotta keep in mind, all right. So 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 some of us don't watch animation of any kind. Okay. I, I raised my daughter, watch a lot of it, I'm done. So I'm looking at live action. So I'm only looking at this from a live action standpoint. And you're dealing with something. I know a lot of stuff has been dealt with with you know the the animation, a lot of storylines, thrawn, everything else. Now we're seeing it in, in, in live action. That's what I'm interested in. And this is a story that I'm excited to hear about because I always thought it would be interesting. Let's see the Jedi at their height, okay? When they they were what they were, not being chased, not you know, uh, be, being eliminated, whatever, not under attack, that kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? And we haven't seen that. See how the training goes, like like the uh, the young ones. We never get to really see it except those few scenes, and then and then Anakin comes in and, and you know. You know, starts killing them all. And know? we just get to see their slaughter, right? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that was it. That's what we got to say. I'm like, oh, that's sad, right? So we get to see a little bit of that. So I'm excited. I, it's a story I think that 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 gets away from Skywalker and that whole that whole family thing that goes on and on and on. That kind of let's call it what it is incestuous circle that's gone on and on and on. And you know, they even tried to do it with the last trilogy. You're bringing back Han Solo. You're bringing back Leia. I mean, it's just like enough. There's enough story to be told here. You got to find a different topic, and I think this time they have. I think Mandalorian's great. Boba Fett sucked, but really, Boba Fett was what Mandalorian 2.1 or 2.0 or 1.5, whatever you want to call it. Okay, you know, I don't know if it was planned that way. They were going to change gears that quick, but they did. And yeah, good thing they did, right? Because Boba Fett was sucking. So you know, this one I, I think it's going to be good. Then I'm excited to see younger versions of Jedi we love. And there are five Jedi we can possibly see. I'm almost convinced that we have to see Yoda in the first episode, just to give a, like a little like a little cameo at least. Like, hey, here's Yoda. He's alive here. That's all you're gonna see of him, though. But will we see Plo Koon? Will we see Apo Rancisis, Yariel Poof, Yaddle? Who knows? I don't know any of those people. Th- those are four I was about Jedi to say Jedi. Alex is going deep on me, man. What's going oh, yeah, on here? Okay. Man? I, I, I know yeah, Luke, got, Han, we Leia. Least, <laughs> yeah, we got at least one more trailers we gotta get through. All right, so. So if anybody wants to sign up for Cap, uh, Professor Star Wars' next class, email him directly. Don't send it to us. Um, all right. So I, I well, Hold on, address- Amy. What did you think of the trailer? It looks Ooh, fine. Anissa. Again, I'm not a Star Wars head, I'm so I'm like, Jedi, Anissa. cool. Uh, all joking aside, Anissa, Alex is an em- uh, employee with our company. He does, uh, you know, he's, he's he's able to relieve both me and Amy when, when we can't be here. So I have to admit, I had some stuff going Please on Please don't week. put it that way. <laughs> So, but no, you you want to stay here for that because you're not going to hear this very often. Uh, sure. So, um, uh, I had some stuff going on this week, and uh, Alex was nice enough to cover for me. So, so all joking aside, you know, shout out to Alex for covering me this week because I, I and, definitely and things are more organized, especially when we got to ship stuff out. So, thank you. Even, yeah, they, even yeah. if you drive us a little crazy sometimes, we you do talk too much. You, you really you. talk too much, really dude. Really but other than that, we do appreciate you. So, so that's who he is, Vanessa. It's really um, funny that yeah. Rex is saying Alex talks too much. I, I'll tell you what, man. I'll tell you what. Just I go earn, back and watch I, any no, of these no, shows, no. Rex. Look at the proportion. No, I earned my right to talk too much, bro. Okay? Did you? <laughs> yeah, damn right I did. So, Amy, you liked so, it. I did. I liked it. There okay. you go. That's my answer, Rex. It's a yes. Thank well, you. while Thanks. we still have Alex here, I want to ask him something. Because yesterday when this trailer dropped, everybody at the shop 
you know, because it's new comic book day. Everybody's coming in wanting to talk about it. And a lot of people are telling me that they think somebody named Darth Revan is supposed to be in it. Do you have any thoughts on that? Darth Revan is a character from Knights of the Old Republic. The Old Republic is set a thousand years beforehand. Darth Revan is not going to be in this at all. There is zero chance. It is not a character they're going to bring. It would be a totally different version of the character. Not right. If they were going to do Revan, this it would have to be actual Old Republic set in the past a long time ago. Um, however, Revan, the name Revan is canon because in Rise of Skywalker, in their fact book, they listed some of the Sith names and Revan was listed there. So the, ca- the name of Revan is canon. Other than that, who knows? All right. I have no opinion because I have no idea who it is. Pulling out the fact book. I love it. <laughs> and it's all the best of Star Wars. Thank All right, you, now Professor. let's jump over to Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, which is the uh, the you name your of the lightsaber in the car. You're, you're welcome. The to bring name I should have worn this... my Beetlejuice shirt. I, I, now, now I'm a little disappointed in myself. I should have worn it because the All one right. trailer I'm probably most ex- the one movie I'm probably most excited for. So, All Beetle right, well let's Juice. get into it. It, it debuts yeah. uh, September this year. We dropped the first little teaser trailer. You don't see much in it at all, but you do get to see Michael Keaton, 72 years old. Dressed up as Beetlejuice, making his return. Winona Ryder, uh, what's her name? Catherine Harris. They're returning. O'Hara. So what? O'Hara, my bad. What did you think, Amy? I know it's just a one minute little tease, and I do. Part of me wishes we see more, but I, as of right now, I guess I guess it'll be okay because we know that right. We're back in the we're back in Winter River. We're back in the town. We see the bridge. We see the model, and it's just. Beetlejuice is back. That's what the trailer's so, saying. He's yeah. back and get ready. So did Eugene Levy die? Was it wasn't he in that movie? No. No? Okay. No, the, the the guy that was in it was uh the the principal from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, that's yeah. right. Oh, he yeah. got in trouble, I remember. Yeah. yeah so yeah. yeah, he's definitely not it. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, and I can see why. It does I get me... the idea that it's his funeral, possibly, yeah. that we see in the trailer, right? So I, you know, yeah, I, I think it was a good trailer in the sense that it gave us just enough. You know, mm-hmm. we know what's happening. Okay, you know, here it is. We know, we know the juice is loose. So it was short. It was sweet, and you know, we're gonna, we're gonna watch it. The day I, the, you know, I thought was a nice little remix. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, choir. I that was nice. Yeah, I could just imagine them. I can imagine a white a writer asking, like, what? Why did dad want this on his funeral? Yeah, I thought that was like, well like I thought that he, was well he became fond of the song. I don't know what to tell you. I just imagine that being a funny conversation. Yeah, I I, I thought that was well done. You know, so yeah, I, I think it's gonna be good. I mean, look, it was it was a short and kind of a short and sweet movie with the original. I mean, you just didn't you didn't see that one coming. You knew the talent was there, but you didn't see that coming, and it just turned out to be great. So I'm hopeful. I don't know. You can't tell much from the trail. It, yeah. it, it was what we expected. It does make me think about how they're going to explain with the Netherworld stuff. Like, Robbie, how well do you know the original Beetlejuice? Pretty like, well. I love happened? that movie. Because, I mean... What happened to that married couple? That's that's kind of a question I'm going to... That, that's, that's what I'm getting to. Because the rules is you die, you're you're stuck in wherever you die. You're stuck in your house for 125 years. So they got to kind of explain why Adam and Barbara aren't there. How do we yeah. know they're not? I, we don't. That, again, but again, that's not what, what we're seeing so far. Again, as far right. as we know, that's Alec Baldwin and T. Davis aren't making cameos. So again, as far as we know, I don't know. Yeah, and and also, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like the idea of like ghosts aging. Now, obviously, Michael Keaton's older, and Beetlejuice looks older, right? But like, he's still under a bunch of makeup, though, so you can kind of excuse him. You know what I mean? Yeah, and we only got the one bit of the voice where he's like, "The juice is loose," and that was the thing that I was really wanting to hear. Can he still do that voice? And the voice was fine. I thought it was cool. I but like Alec Baldwin in particular looks a lot different today than than he did. I think Gina can still pull it off. Maybe they'll do some like de aging, or they'll definitely have to reference it or or answer that question in this movie. I just know that. In all the interviews that have come out so far, Tim Burton says, "No, we're we're sticking with the practical effects, like the first movie, like the stop motion snakes, 
and they're, they're going to keep it practical as at least as much as they can, which I really, I know everyone appreciates because that was one of the charms about the original movie. So Yeah, Marcus, the dead do could decompose, but they don't pick up weight like Alec Baldwin. Okay, so. <laughs> so 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 yeah, I hope they give us a good explanation if if we don't see them at all. I don't. They they did release a a statement about what the plot is and right. like there's stuff going on in the netherworld and in the human world. So I don't like if something's going on in the netherworld, they have to bring all the ghosts in. I, I don't know how they're going to explain it, but I'm looking forward to, forward to it. So yeah, I, I I I think it was just enough. Um, it's kind of depending that you obviously saw the first movie. Because if you didn't see the first movie, not not a whole lot of that trailer would make much sense, right? So they're they're playing on that, which is what they should be, right? Yeah, almost everything that we're talking about today is playing on people's, you know, nostalgia or you yep. know, a legacy of some franchise yep. or something, including right. Alien. So we got Alien. We got a new Alien film, Alien Romulus. It's coming out this summer. We got a little teaser for that. It doesn't show you too much at all. It is from the director of Don't Breathe and Evil Dead, the uh, I think 2013 version of Evil Dead. I see. I see. I haven't seen the Evil Dead movie. I haven't seen either of those, so I'm not familiar with this guy's work. But I hear that you know that he's good at horror, and the trailer or the little teaser we get definitely leans into the horror aspect of it, which kind of takes it back to its original roots which I yeah. love. Ridley Scott is a producer. I have heard that they are going to, because there's there's a section of Alien fandom, of which I'm included, that is kind of saddened that we didn't get to see the continuation of whatever Ridley Scott was trying to set up with Prometheus and the Covenant, right? But I've heard that they're going to be tying that stuff in, and Scott's a producer on it. So I thought the teaser was fine, and you know, basically let us know there's a new Alien movie coming out. We're going back to the horror roots. It's going to be scary. And it did look very... You know, it's CG heavy. That's what that's what it's going to be. But uh, we'll see what happens. What did you all think? I have a cut like. Ridley Scott, like, again, lately has been. Very hit, hit or miss, like, and this whole thing with Alien, like he made a comment once about how all the superhero movies are the same. I'm like, oh, every Alien movie isn't the same. Essentially, I, I kind of got to agree with that statement. Watching a trailer, it was clear it was going to be more alien and less aliens, right? But pretty much the same thing. You, you got the alien, you know, in its different stages and its little crab stage and, you know, running through the quarters of a ship. And that's how is this like, any different? That, that's my biggest thing. Yeah, I, I, don't, as I don't much see as, how it's going to be any As different. much as I like the director and, and he does know how to do horror, because, again, I really loved his Evil Dead movie. I'm still kind of on the fence about it. Well, aliens again, actually the same thing over and over again. I'll watch it, but you know, to me, what's different? You know, I mean, I get it. Okay, so like in the first one, an alien on a ship. Okay, in the second one, aliens on a planet, and the third one, an alien in a prison planet, right? And then you just keep going, and I get that idea. But what I love about the alien franchise is all the stuff about that that corporation, right? And the the ongoing saga of like them consistently and constantly trying to manipulate things and what i like to see explored is what ridley was trying to explore in those other movies which is about like the origin of life and how the aliens are attached to that how the engineers are attached to that there's a lot of mystery that's in the background of the alien franchise that just never really gets developed too much in those movies and that's what i was hoping for in prometheus and covenant and what was going to happen afterwards but i don't know maybe the point is just to try to make a new generation of moviegoers understand like, I guess the terror that the original alien kind of brought into us. I don't know. I'm excited for it, but I, I do feel exactly what y'all are saying. Yeah. I just feel like, you know, I'm going to watch it because I've watched just about every incarnation of it, but I just don't see that it, at least not in the trailer that you've introduced anything new. It's the same old concept, right? Alien. Okay. Somehow mysteriously ends up on ship. Okay, then begins to terrorize the, the people on the ship. Okay, and then, you know, little alien babies bursting out of bellies and, you know, hiding and becoming big aliens with dripping acid, uh, you know, blood and saliva. I mean, you just, uh, we've done there, been there, done that. Introduce something new. You know, I, I don't know what that might be, but, and I agree with something Anissa said. Okay, 
uh, you know, Bullet. stop the remakes, yeah. stop the, the reboots, dude. Everything we're talking about is, is as you said, depending on nostalgia and some more naked than others, others, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's definitely something I'll check out. All right. Let's talk about the, uh, Furiosa Mad Max saga. We got George Miller returning. We got Anya Taylor joy as Furiosa. What's that? This one looks fun. Yeah, I, I think the trailer looks fine. It looks like it, it so looks very much like Fury Road, right? So it looks like high octane action. Yeah, uh, it looks like it's going to be nonstop. I and, do I have know. a question. Yeah, I'm watching a trailer. Does it look like Chris Hemsworth has a prosthetic nose? Yes. Okay. I, I, You're I, not crazy. I thought, yeah, I thought I wasn't sure. I'm like that. Don't look right. So okay, all right. So it looks like you know to me the same kind of. It, it, I don't know. The one thing that bothers me is. There once again, I don't know. It feels a little bit like uh, a road warrior. Mm -hmm. You know, you got the truck rolling through. So we'll see. We'll see. It's another you know, thing I'll, where it's I'll, like just kind of trying to replay the hits, right? In a way. Yeah, in a way. You know, you you you're shooting from the truck. You know, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I I, I hope I hope that that it's not what I think it's going to be. But did you like Fury Road? I did. I didn't love it, but I liked it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It just I really like Fury together. Road, so I'm excited for this one. Yeah, it didn't really come together for me. I just, I don't know. I don't know. I, I didn't dislike it, but I didn't love it. I don't know why. Okay. Amy, any thoughts? I mean, that Fury Road was such a surprise for me of how much I liked it. So that's what gives me hope for this one that I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll enjoy this one too. I like, I don't, I don't. It's like, what could possibly go wrong? And I, I don't want to jinx it. So knock on one. I don't know. Nothing goes wrong. Yeah, it looks fun. It looks, like I said, high octane action, over the top characters, ridiculous stuff. I mean, once again, playing those same those same notes, but that's kind of what we get, you know? And Jay had a really good thing. He said, the problem is people like familiarity. New properties are hard to get a foothold, in my opinion. Like Boy Kills World. Doesn't feel like it's going to get enough buzz. And that, I mean, that's true. That was something that was, I, I saw that listed, but I didn't but watch that, the trailer. That's, because, nothing, so. that's again, because of the studios, they won't promote it. They choose what they choose to promote. And since they, it's but stuck in their they, head. That, don't that, they, don't they base that on, on like what people, cause I mean, I'll be honest. I know a lot of fans that, that that's all they want is they just want the same thing. Like there are people that just want star Wars to be about Luke Skywalker being doofy and they want start. They want that version of Star Wars. They don't like anything new. There are people like they don't want their Amazing Spider-Man to do anything different. They don't want. There are people that just want paint by the numbers, the same thing over and over and over again. <laughs> don't you um, think? I don't know. You know, I I I think that I I don't. I actually think that there's some people that do like it, but if that's all you're being fed, what are you gonna do, right? So if you got chicken, pork, and fish every day, it's the same type. You know, some people are going to have more of the chicken. Some people are going to have more of the pork. You know, you know what I'm saying? So it's what we're being fed, and that's determined by the studios, the studio execs. They determine what they think is going to work, and then we're force fed. Who's, who's to say if they promoted something that was original IP that it wouldn't it wouldn't take off? Okay, but you don't really get the chance. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So. I, I, you know, I think it's on that, you know, yeah. so. And this is something we've talked about on the channel before, like the dangers of franchises and franchise fatigue mm -hmm. and how the studios now just depend on these kind of things and not necessarily on, on movies that are original concepts, you know, or movies that are original. And, you know, there's, there's a movement out there, people that love that stuff. There's, you know, a 24 is the studio doing that, but now even them, they're in danger of doing this because they're trying to get into the Friday, the 13th game and all that kind of stuff. So. I don't know. Well, we're gonna one of the one of the uh, trailers we're gonna talk about today. I feel like that 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 trying to get to nostalgia has jumped the shark in a sense. All right. So okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it when we get to it. All right. Well, let's go ahead and and get into it. Uh, you're talking about the Fall Guy, I'm assuming. Yes. Right now, the Fall Guy, so, if anybody doesn't know, is based on the Lee Majors show from back in the day. I can well, bum bum yeah. bum bum bum. Well, that's the problem. That's the problem. So I was talking to Alex about it before the show. And I said, yeah, it was a, it was a TV show. The TV show was good, and they shouldn't remake these these things. And he actually said it was a TV show. He didn't even know. I didn't know yeah. either. 
I, I, see, I, I think that's going to be most of the people that watch this. They're not going to know it was a TV show, right? So, so is this nostalgia bait or is this really truly just trying to take a concept and make it work for today's audience, right? I think so they're more on why that. Do you need, but why do you need that? You see, why do you need to go back to that name? Because most it's not it's not getting you recognition because so many people don't even know that it was a TV show. OK, uh -huh. all right. Now I'm watching the trailer. It looks silly. And I think that the one potential that could save the movie is Ryan Gosling. I'm like, yeah, he seemed very humorous in that movie. All right. That's about it. OK, I, I think the concept, you, you know where the Fall Guy concept came from, right? Where? A few years before Fall Guy premiered on TV, Burt Reynolds made a movie called Hooper. And that, I think it was called Hooper. And that was about a stuntman in his life, okay, jumping cars and all that kind of stuff. And then not too long after that, we had the Fall Guy, which was kind of the same kind of concept a little bit. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying, why? You want to make an action comedy, go ahead and make an action comedy. You don't have to name it the Fall Guy. What's the purpose there? So the, the, the thing that bothers you is, is the fact that it's, it's branded as the Fall Guy. Well, what I'm saying is that that doesn't show record of success. Who watched Starsky and Hutch? How'd that go over? Not so good. Okay. Well, yep. something else. Wow. Didn't go over so good. Okay. It, that's not a winning formula. So if you just want to make an action comedy, make it. Name it something. Okay. You well, know, then they would have the problem of people watching the movie and being like, this is just the fall guy. <laughs> but it doesn't look anything like the fall guy. No, you it doesn't. It doesn't at all, but I think the trailer looks awesome. That looks like a movie that I would like to go see in a theater with a group of people enjoying it. It looks like it's going to be hilarious. Looks like it's got some great stunts. It does have the cinematography of John Wick, which everything does nowadays. That's just like the aesthetic that everybody's going for. I think Ryan Gosling is going to be great. Emily Blunt, I think, seemed very charming from what I see. I think Winston Duke. Right. That's him. That's in there. Right. Mm -hmm. From Black Panther. He's hilarious yeah. in movies, especially when he gets to like do comedic yeah, bits. This yeah. movie to me looks like a winner. I am 100 percent down for this one. What about you, Amy? What are you thinking? Because I'm a fan of Emily Blunt. I'm a fan of Ryan Gosling. And it looks like a very well they, they, thought out yeah. action comedy. So they I'm, I'm willing to check to it save out. It. They may be able to save it, but I'm not not impressed with this constantly going back and trying to recreate something, you know, in your own vision. Billy Power Max, don't be surprised. I, I'm surprised if somebody hasn't remade Knight Rider. Okay. I think Knight Rider is right around the corner. Knight Rider, Simon and Simon, like Jay was saying, they've already tried the A team. That one didn't really work out too well. Yeah, that didn't go over well. So, you know, so so I don't know why they keep doing it. It's not a winning formula. It's proven time and time again. So but whatever. I don't know. Maybe they should do a greatest American hero next or something like that. Right. I think I've even heard that rumors. Would actually time. Be funny. That would actually probably be pretty good. All right. So out of all of these uh, trailers that we discussed, what are you most looking forward to? Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Wait, wasn't there another one? Was there? What was the other one? I don't know. I mean, no, no, no. That it, On your list, uh, aliens, uh, was below, so that's what I'm thinking about. Okay. <coughs> so Amy's looking okay. forward to Beetlejuice the most. What about you, Rex? Hmm. Probably, I, I gotta admit, uh, Acolyte is probably the one I'm looking most forward to. Okay. Okay. Yeah. For me, uh, House of the Dragon is the thing I'm most looking forward to. Very, very excited for that. Uh, out of all of these, what are you the least looking forward to? Fall guy. Sorry. Maybe just because I'm not a Star Wars head, Acolyte. I'd probably go with yeah. Acolyte as well, to be honest. I'm just, I just kind of like with the oversaturation of Star Wars that has happened, and then 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 also the conversation around that. I'm just so oh, I'm just so tired of it. I'm just so tired of it, right? And Marcus is right. Fall Guy is apparently uh, like testing really, really well 
So Jay's looking forward to Beetlejuice. Yeah, that's, what they said about, that's what they said about the Flash too. I'm just saying that is what they said um, about the Flash. <laughs> so Billy Power Max, Dune Three. I well, I gotta watch two first, but hurry up. My fear about Dune Three is I don't know how you can adapt that book. That book does is does not translate well visually into a film. I think there's so much of it that there's the 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 old blind desert man, you know, who everybody thinks is Paul, you know, that that surrounds this book. And it's mostly about his sister, uh, Aaliyah, trying to consolidate power. So I don't know how that's going to translate on the film. I thought it was a great book. Don't get me wrong. Dune Messiah was a phenomenal book. But I just, you know what I'm saying? Not like the, the, the first novel, Dune. Is it going to translate that cleanly? It's a lot of palace intrigue, that kind of stuff. Well, maybe they'll but, have to add some stuff to it. Right? And they had, I, I believe that was the first book where they brought back Duncan Idaho as a Gola. So I don't, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the one. See, what's funny is that, that that he's not spending much time developing the Duncan Idaho character because the one consistency throughout all the Dune millennia is Duncan Idaho. He, they keep bringing him back as what they call a Gola, okay? All right, so he's the one that that sees all of it. And and that's very strange. It, it's, it's a very unique kind of position. Hmm. So- you know, to understand the entire series of novels, Duck and, Duck and Idaho, even when Frank Herbert's son took over and wrote, you know, more books to, to, to that effect, that was the big thing. The Duncan Idaho character was consistent throughout. Who, who plays him in the movie? Because I'm not knowing the name. It's uh, what's his name? Momoa. Yeah. Oh, okay. Jason Momoa's character. Yeah. I was wondering, like, I, I was, I thought he would be in Dune too, but you know, I didn't know the story or he's, anything. Well, he's not at that point in the book. Because one and two is all just the first book, Dune. At this point, he's killed after the uh, uh, the Harkonnens raid Arrakis, right? So during that attack, he's gone. All right, okay. but he comes back in Doom. I believe it's Doom Messiah, and they introduce him as a Gola to marry Aaliyah. Okay, so so that's how the book does it. I don't know how they're gonna do it in the movie. So and then he keeps coming back. They reincarnate him every single time. Huh? It's 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 a very interesting kind of way of. So there's one consistency in the entire Dune universe throughout the millennia. So you're saying this dude keeps coming back and Paul just becomes a giant worm. Is that what you're saying? No, Paul does not become a giant worm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Paul's son, Leto II, becomes a giant worm and God Emperor did. Jesus, that just sounds so stupid. It's like, weird. Just... <laughs> it's not stupid at all. It really isn't. I I'm telling you. Listen, it's far more intellectual than Professor Star Wars. Uh, and this is where I'm going to agree with Billy Powermax. You know, and what uh, uh, what George Lucas wrote. Okay, George Lucas is smart guy, knows how to market, knows how to merchandise, knows how to tell a simple story on film uh, at a time when we never see anything like it. All right, um, I haven't spoiled anything, Power Max, because I don't know how they're going to do it. But um, Frank Herbert was a real writer. Okay, this is what he did. He did his livelihood. Okay, so all these things they sound weird. They're really not. Okay, you're talking about old republic, high republic, a bunch of guys running around with light sword. That's not stupid. <laughs> yeah, I've been right. uh, at night. I've been like rewatching the original Star Wars trilogy with like George Lucas commentary, and it's yeah. it's so it's so infuriating sometimes because this guy's just like just acting like he's like, well, you know, I I, I knew this and I knew this, and I'm like, you didn't know any of that stuff, bro. Come on, man. Like, stop lying. Stop fibbing. Figure drawing. Agree. He has a red dude. Robbie, what you just said mission. reminded me. Recently, they just up. I, I was watching this video. They're talking to John Williams about how he's, you know, him talking about the most famous themes ever. And he, talk, and, he, and he talks about, like, you know, the first Star Wars, how he's writing a love theme for Leia. And, you know, he at the time, he's thinking, you know, he sees Luke and Leia. I'm like, okay, so I'll write a love theme because they'll get together. And then... You know, George tells us, oh, they're siblings. He's like, I got to write a whole new theme. John Spillales, don't explain to us why, please. Star Wars? No, no Star Wars. Do it. <laughs> it was just really funny how he explained. It's like, yeah, George Lucas didn't tell us anything for that first movie about what where the story was going. So he had to write a whole new theme for Leia. Oh, wow. The first movie. Listen, like, his, like, you know, and I'm a big Star Wars fan, but that the universe is, is really very simplistic compared to something like Dune. Okay. All right. Dune is talking about an entire galaxy and how it's ruled. Okay, you're talking about starting jihads and things like that. It, it, it's it's a very complex world, political maneuvering, things like that. These are things that Frank Herbert details. Okay, in his well, book. that that sounds like Herbert. Phantom Menace. 
to me, Rex. <laughs> oh, no. No, no. If anything, if anything, they they probably stole from Frank Herbert to try to create their universe. Okay? All right. You know, you, you have to realize what the way that he had it written was was copied by a lot of different different writers. Okay? <clears throat> um, what he talked about is this 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 you know, collection of houses and, and their power within the realm. Okay. All right. And the spice, the spice being critical because I, I don't know if they touched on this in Dune 2. They didn't really touch on it in Dune 1. Okay. But why is the spice important? Now, not the longevity crap. Okay. The spacing girl can't travel anywhere without it. So that would essentially shut down interstellar commerce, right? You're all just a bunch of backwards planets, not able to reach your neighbor. That's why. Okay, they, they never really, uh, yeah, Sledhead, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Phantom Menace is never better than Dune. It's not better than anything. All right, George Lucas. It's better than Rise of Skywalker. What? That's, yes, that's true. That's, well, that's not, a, that's not a real movie, so. So, you know, <laughs> I, I got to tell you, Robbie, if you have the time, shoot, I, I probably have, still have a paperback somewhere in the house. Dude, you should absolutely, uh, uh, you should absolutely read it. It's a really Dune? Beautiful. Yes. To really oh, I, I, I have Dune. I, I bought Dune after I watched that first part, that Dune part one. Like, I, I bought it immediately after. I just have never. It's a big book. It's never opened. It is a very big book. But let me tell you, you get through the first 50 pages, you're hooked. And it won't seem that big. I'm telling yeah. you, man. Yeah, I need to start okay. making more time to read novels again because I was doing, I was, I was back into a good flow of it about a year ago. And then. Then it just falls apart. You got to watch all these movies. You got to watch, read all these comics. And then it's just like, where do I have time to read the novel? But I do want to get back into it. And Dune's one I, I do want to read because I've heard really, great things about it. There are subtleties within subtleties that, that you're not going to get in the movie, no matter how good the movie is, you know, because otherwise it would, it, it would need to be a, a, a series as opposed to whatever, you know? Um, yes. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know if it would work as an audio book. I, I, somebody's droning voice reading every passage i don't know i I'm, but i'm not a fan of audiobooks in, in the first place so um but i i gotta tell you i am a huge fan obviously as you, you've heard of of everything he wrote that i wrote what his son tried to to expand the universe to the end and i've read all of those and he held true to what his his, his father tried to build i give him that but uh okay. yeah definitely Heck worth yeah. your time if you're a sci-fi fan all right. Well, what do y'all think of Dune? Should I read it? Let me know in the comments below. What do y'all think of these movie trailers and TV show trailers that we talked about today? Let us know if you're watching on the replay. You out there in the chat, we really do appreciate you joining us. Rex, Amy, it's always a pleasure. What y'all got coming up? So tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Experience, the EXP. Nick will be there at 7 p.m. Uh, uh, yeah, for yes. original art. All right. Some great stuff. What do you got tonight? Um, a little Fernando Passerin. We got some nice... Vampirella pages tonight. This is one from the seventies. I saw. Yeah, oh, yeah it's yeah. from ish. It's the Ma Vampirella. It's the magazine the issue number forty-five. So that was before. So, yeah, we from had the seventies. Yeah, to to to, to make Vampirella. So it's uh, uh from the seventies. So it's not only old; it's really cool. Um, so definitely tune in. Of course, Robbie and I will be back on Monday with uh, hopefully John for our normal comic collectible show on on the XP at six p.m. Uh, Eastern. And what do you got going on, bro? Well, we're in the last week now of March Madness, our celebration of the insanity of cinema. Do check out the show that debuted last night over at Blood Splatter Chatter. We had a great discussion on Jacob's Ladder. That was a fantastic movie and a fantastic discussion that we had. Tomorrow night, I'll be on Dylan's Horror Show for A Blade in the Dark, a 80s Lamberto Bava Italian giallo. And then on Monday night, we're going to be talking about Spiral for March Madness on PCP Movie Night. This is the one that is co-directed by Adam Green, not the Saw movie, but this is a really cool one. I think all three of these movies very appropriate for March Madness. So, all right, everybody. We're dipping out. Y'all have a great weekend. We'll see.